Cool. All right. So, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out to see my uh, evolutionary hypothesis about uh, mitochondrial hybrids and why they may have existed, and also to explain why Neanderthals are currently not around today. So, first, let's start with this uh, clever graphic here of the migration path of Homo sapiens. So, humans originated in Ethiopia, uh, modern day Ethiopia, around 250,000 years ago. Within about 150,000 years, humans are practically everywhere, right? Like in a geographic heartbeat, pretty much we had dominated almost every corner uh, of the globe and almost every climate imaginable. In order, to, in, for, uh, for instance, to make it to modern day Cambridge, humans would have first had to cross the Saharan and Arabian deserts uh, to scale the Himalayas, then to cross Siberia, swim across the Bering Strait, and then survive Canada. <laughs> all the way, all the way from uh, modern day Ethiopia. Now, Clearly, something gave our ancestors, I hope, a really, really good reason to move hundred, hundreds of thousands of miles away from their native land, besides the lions, and <laughs> something gave them the energy to make it happen. And so with that, we will start by talking about uh, your mother. No, no, like, <laughs> not exactly your mother, but why you should be thankful to your mother that she gave you these little deals called mitochondria in every one of your cells. Mitochondria are important for every biological process because they constantly produce energy in the form of a molecule called ATP. Without ATP, without ATP, you know, muscles cannot contract, neurons cannot fire, no cell in the body can function. And so with that, it's pretty clear that Biology is incredibly, incredibly dependent on these organelles, but it's also imp important to note that humans only get about half of what we can obtain. You see, mitochondria, much like DNA, are inherited and passed down from parent to child. But in the case of mitochondria, only the mother's mitochondria are preserved. The father's mitochondria are marked and destroyed upon conception in the embryo every time. And so, what does this mean besides you know, every, all of your energy being from the mom's side of the family? It actually means that there is um, some mechanism that selects out the father's mitochondria, and for as long as we've known, it's not very clear you know, if the exceptions to this mechanism are possible and for what purpose this mechanism may have served. However, this hypothesis uh, takes that and says, okay, well, if it is indeed possible for this mechanism to exist, it could have been seen in Paleolithic humans instead of today. And if uh, humans, say, were to have this mechanism altered, it could lead to the uh, support of two mitochondrial strains, two different types of mitochondria from, parent, uh, from both parents, to be supported by um, each cell. This would mean a, double, uh, a doubling of mitochondrial energy, cellular energy being produced, and would therefore lead to superhuman abilities that can be likened to super strength, endurance, and metabolism. <laughs> so, yes, the, the, the graphics are all completely accurate. So, um, if Paleolithic humans were able to adopt mitochondria from two parents, they would be able to have these uh, traits. They could travel massive distances, they could scale mountains, they could uh, swim across seas, and they would be able to survive the cold of the last ice age, the coldest parts of the last ice age, using super body heat. If you were to put this together into the, uh, the, uh, the map that we had earlier, would explain why humans were able to make it so far across the globe. This could explain why the natives of South America were able to settle the highest peaks of the Andes. This could also explain why the Maori people of New Zealand were able to make it to that tiny little island. And this could also explain why the natives of North America were able to survive, given the ever-present threat of the dread Canadian moose. <laughs> and so, with that, we'd be able to... <laughs> With that, we're able to see that, okay, with increased, with, with increased um, energy needs, this would require, um, sorry, increased energy would require increased energy needs. These individuals would require about 4,000 calories uh, of energy a day, which is about twice of what we do now, in, in, with exceptions, and uh, would definitely be much more than uh, these humans would be able to achieve or obtain uh, compared to today's supersized metrics. And so, um, with that, we would say that since they were obviously traveling always, trying constantly in search of food to just feed their, their stinking superpowers, it would be um, reasonable to explain you know, why this came about. 
So, right, recall that um, originally mitochondrial inheritance is from only one parent, not two. Uh, and an exception for this would actually um, be something that would be that was recently supported by the um, University of Citations Needed, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> right. And uh, this uh, biparental mitochondrial inheritance would be able to support that this. Uh, this exception to the uh, traditional mechanism is possible when you have two parents coming together to make a hybrid uh, offspring. That is to say, when two similar but non-identical species are able to produce a hybrid, this could, because of the genetic differences between the two, um, uh, bypass the traditional mechanism and allow for biparental mitochondrial inheritance. And so, where would this, what animal would have bred with humans to be able to produce this kind of hybrid? I say animal, that's kind of general, but it's really a, a humanoid that we're going to look at, which is the Neanderthal, or Homo neanderthalensis, but no one really likes that scientific name. So here with Neanderthals, right, when humans interacted with native populations of Neanderthals, usually in, uh, you'd say Europe, I'd suppose, uh, they were able to uh, produce offspring that we, we've uh, put together all possible permutations of human, <laughs> human Neanderthal interbreeding for your convenience. Uh, they would be able to produce viable offspring if male humans, male Homo sapiens, interact uh, bred with uh, female Neanderthals. This would be uh, pr produce a hybrid species that would essentially be two non-identical uh, but similar humanoid species coming together, making a hybrid, which could thus bypass the traditional mitochondrial inheritance patterns that we see today. And so with that, we can say, all right, well now we have the, the stellar, flawless, I'd say, uh, explanation for why we have uh, mitochondrial superhumans existing in ancient history, but we must explain why they're not around anymore. And to begin with that, we would say why Neanderthals are no longer around. And it's pretty clear once you have this definition, this theory under your belt, to explain why Neanderthals went out. You see, clearly, humans, <laughs> humans and ancient superhumans teamed up together to effectively oust the Neanderthal, outcompete them for food, and outcompete them in territorial disputes due to their increased uh, ability in uh, energy and especially combat. Now, <laughs> now, when um, these individuals would compete for food and territory, it would be pretty clear that the Neanderthals eventually, over time, would be, be, uh, would be outcompeted and phased out evolutionarily. This would then lead to the uh, complete deficit that the uh, Earth would have of ne Neanderthal females to be able to produce uh, these mitochondrial superhumans, which would eventually lead to their own extinction. These individuals also would be the uh, first to starve in cases of famine and the first to uh, succumb to the most malignant tumors if they ever uh, generated cancer. That's, that's actually a citation somewhere that I'm not going to list here. <laughs> so with that, we can say that eventually, after all that time, after all that competition, there could only be one, Homo sapiens. <laughs> that could fill the space, the niche, that was filled by superhumans, humans, and Neanderthals. So finally, just to get some primary sources up in this. <laughs> Not gonna fill that last word in. We're going to, we're going to have uh, this rock art, this uh, specific cave painting that was found in the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa that's dated to be about uh, 20,000 and 10,000 years ago, uh, years old where you have these individuals over here on the right side of the image who are trying their best to sort of fight these three individuals here who happen to be very strong, almost radiating with energy <laughs> that you can clearly see. <laughs> so perhaps ancient humans were able to categorize and document the, ex the existence of superhumans long before we did. But for the rest of us, we can just thank our mothers for giving us the energy to live today. <laughs> thank you.